Can you guys hear me okay? Well, hey everyone, it's Rebecca Ruth. Thanks for tuning in for another episode with another creative today. So um, today I have Eric Castaño with me. How are you, Eric? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Um, of course. Thank you for being here. So um, Eric, I like to jump right into it. So tell us where you are and what you do in the industry. I am in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I am a model here now. I've been modeling now since about about six or seven years now that I've been modeling now here in the, in the area. I also traveled uh, throughout outside the area to Washington, Richmond, New York. So um, modeling now has been a, a more than just a hobby at this point. So it's been really rewarding so far. Well, that's awesome. Um, so tell us, how did this, how did this journey start? How did, how did you get into modeling? It's really funny that you that you asked that because my cousin was the one that was in show business when we were younger. I was like eight, eight or seven years old and he was doing a lot of shows in Broadway and he did a lot of modeling gigs and my mother's a very big fashionista and um, I would watch and see my mother get dressed to go out to Studio 54 and like I'm an only child. I don't have any brothers or sisters. So my cousin was like my brother and he and I would watch him go to these castings and these shows and I would see him walk. And well, by chance, one day I went into an agency and they took some headshots of me and they liked what they saw, but it never really kind of like progressed into anything. It was just kind of like small stuff, nothing major. Years later, after I got out of the Navy and so on and so forth. People would ask me, hey, how come you don't model? How come you don't do this? How come you don't, you know, you have this look about you, like, why don't you try this? And I was very hesitant because I was a little bit shy and I didn't like, wasn't really quite comfortable with modeling still. But nonetheless, um, I just took a stab at the Navy. People had, so I had gotten out of the Navy. People were asking me why I didn't model. And it was just one of those things where I was kind of still shy. I didn't really feel too comfortable. Later on down the road, you know, I was about 37 at the time. And a friend of mine had just won model, female model of the year, Diana. And um, she was there at a show that we had at, um, at the Sandler Center for Bila Fusion. It was, a, it was a showcase. And Evie Mansfield was there, which is the uh, agent, one of the agency here in Hampton Roads. And she said, why don't you model? Why don't you try modeling? And I was like, I don't know, I might try. And Evie was there and she was like, well, come to my office and I'll set you up and see how, how things go. And went to her office, did a couple of walks for her and she put me in a, um, in a bridal show out here, Coastal Virginia Bridal Show. And um, I kind of did a couple of walks with them and then uh, wind up doing some uh, other bridal shows in the region, Val and um, Uniquely Yours and Maya Palooza and all these bridal shows just started coming coming at me little by little before you know it, it was three or four years I was doing these shows and I met with Ron Cook who's another producer out of DC in this area and I started doing shows for him in Maryland and in the, the DC area in Richmond and then I started walking for these other people other designers that wanted me to walk with them so it just kind of slowly progressed into other things but my ultimate goal was to walk in New York. And um, I was able to walk in New York uh, two years ago for a designer named Adrian Alessia, and he's out of New York. And he gave me my first opportunity to walk in New York. And um, I was very thankful and fortunate to be able to walk for his, for his clothing design. And it was a, a magnificent experience I had with that. And uh, I kind of felt like that had reached the the pinnacle of what I wanted to do, which is just, just walk in New York, just do it once. And I was able to do that. And then after that, I was able to walk again in New York after that. And another show came after that. So I've already walked in New York about three or four times already. I've walked in Atlantic City Fashion Week. Um, I was trying out for Philadelphia Fashion Week, which is, that's the one I'm trying to get in there. But now it's just, you know, I just, I'm constantly either being booked or trying to get booked for these, different shows in the region because um, I'm going to start exploring into other realms of the industry as well. That's really cool. So I have a couple of questions. So sure. I've been in the industry 
for 17 years, but I started out as a model and I quickly left <laughs> modeling. So for me, one of the, the issues I had back then when I first started was I just didn't feel like I could deal with the pressure of, you know, being a certain size. Now, this is 17 years later and we've come a long way and everything like that. Um, but, you know, back then it was still very much, you know, you know, a certain size and look and just like having to keep that my physical appearance was directly linked to my livelihood, right? That's what I felt like back then. I just couldn't deal with. So has that been something that you've had to get like adjusted to? I mean, you're, you know, you're fit, but I'm just saying, is that like something, I don't know, do you ever feel pressure or anything like that? I, I will say this. Um, I walk into a, a casting and I walk in and I look around and I see guys that are in their 20s. I'm 46. I just turned 46 on August the 1st. So well, well, happy birthday, belated. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I walk into this room and I see guys with their shorts off and their six pack abs and this, that, and the third. And I'm, I, like you said, I, I, I maintain a good relatively fit schedule. I'm in the gym at, at six in the morning every day. I work out, I run, I, I, I keep myself the best shape that I can. And can I do better? Absolutely, I do. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm not that behind on the curve. And that's, and the reality is a lot of these people, when they see me, I'm one, I'm tall and, you know, they, they like the fact that I'm six, five, and that's usually what gets me through the door is my height. So anything else after that is kind of like, all right, well, let's see you walk. Well, let's see what you can do. Or well, let's see how you can do this. Can you stop on a dime? Can you turn around? How's your, how's your walk? How's this? How's that? And so it's kind of like, I have to perform at that point. I have to give them what they're looking for compared to the younger guys that are coming up with already chiseled bodies. But I think what has happened so far is that I've gained a lot of experience and that's helped me so far through the game. And the new guys that are coming up that are coming in the game are, are coming in. Yes, yes, they, are look, they look amazing. They keep in great physique and they keep great physical shape, but they still lack a lot of experience. And I... I will. I won't dare say that that's going to be an issue because that's a lot of a lot of agencies and a lot of producers are looking for just to look, mm -hmm. but they're also looking for the guy that knows how to do the stuff and how to be a, a professional at what they do. It's just not about just about walking here and come back. There is a certain way you have to walk. There's a certain way you have to present the look, and I've I've been blessed to be able to be around people that have showed me and I've always paid attention, and kind of grasp that and that's been my claim to fame i'm very prepared when i go to any of these shows and that's another thing I'm, i am i bring a model back with me that's full to the gills with all kinds of stuff and anybody that's ever short on anything they come to me because they know i have it and that's what's had me that really has been the my claim to fame in this industry because when they see me eric castaño always comes prepared point blank and simple that is that is what they say and i've been very thankful because of that, because I really truly believe in being prepared and being ready at when your number is called. It sucks when the designer will give you a piece of clothing and he may not have the proper look that that's going to complete the look. And, he, and you may have that piece. You may have it, but you didn't bring it. I have it in my bag. I carry that piece. A lot of designers love that. Oh, Eric, what do you see in this? Oh, what do you think might be this? Or even if not, I might not even need anything, but I might make a suggestion. And the mere fact that I make a suggestion to them and they say, well, what, let me see what you have. And I pop this pocket square or I pop this flower here or I pop a, cu a cuff link here. Tells the designer that I'm, I have my stuff prepared for you in case you need something. A pair of shoes might make the outfit look better. Who knows? But I'm just, I think that's really what has been kind of been the feather in my cap so far. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking from someone on the other side of things, from like the stylist, the producer, the director side, mm -hmm. <laughs> you sound like a dream model because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, all those little things, they do make a big difference because you already know there's all this hustle and bustle going on backstage, you know, like mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, you know, it looks real nice on the runway, just don't go in the back. <laughs> That's right. It's, the it's chaos chaotic. is in the back. Right. Like it's chaotic back there. So mm -hmm. it's like I have worked, you know, with, with 
all ages and models and things like that. And I will say that, yes, like the younger ones and everything, you know, obviously they're usually in better shape than we are and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's it, like there is something to be said about experience. And, um, you know, when a model comes in and you, you're just like, I don't have to tell this person anything, you know? They know where they need to be. They know what they need to be doing. I don't need to be chasing after you, which I won't do anymore. But, <laughs> you know, it's like, so you sound like you would be great to work with, <laughs> actually. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's really awesome. Um, I have seen your walk. So did you have, did you practice your walk or is that a natural walk? I mean, some of it is I, natural, right? I it's will natural. be honest with you. I don't, I've never really ever put a whole lot of emphasis on the walk. I think I, I, I love suits so much that the most of the times I've always been in suits. Recently, I've been doing a lot of urban and a lot of, you know, casual clothing and so on and so forth, which doesn't really, tra- doesn't really change a whole lot of the way that I walk. I don't really like have a, okay, a, a signature, okay, I'm practice this walk and just go. I think I just kind of go with how I feel with, the, with, the, with the, what I'm wearing and how the designer and I are, you know, our, 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 the, the chemistry that we both have. And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you just got to wear the clothes and walk down the runway. True. But the reality is, I think as uh, from the model perspective, there has to be a certain feel. I got I, I to gotta feel that you're, I got to feel your garments and I got to feel like, all right, this is something I could definitely walk. Now, mind you, if you look at my IG, I wore a rainbow floral poncho with a hat and a bow around my neck thanks to Ray Vincent, Ray Vincent, who is a magnificent designer. Did I know that I was gonna be wearing that that day? I did not. But when he told me and he, when we talked about it and his final words was, you're gonna close my show and I want you to wear this like a king, guess what? I got you. And I just ran down that walkway and I did that thing, did the damn thing with it and just came back. And to this day, I get calls from him all the time saying, my poncho has been doing this and this and this like, and it's been great to have that opportunity. So when you have this type of relationship and you feel the garments, I feel like that's kind of helps you present the walk. Now, I don't know, I can't, that's just me. A lot of people have different walks and they have different swags and twists and do what they do and certain props they do use for their walks. So be it. I just feel like it's just a nice, clean, normal walk and let the garment kind of speak for itself. Well, I mean, that's the way it should be, you know, Mm -hmm. like when we work with models on walks and stuff, we actually kind of discourage the models who are doing a lot of extra. (laughs) Right. All right. You're doing too much. (laughs) Like, because at the end of the day, I think something that, um, you know, I guess you could say veterans. I don't know. Someone told me the other day that I'm an OG in Mm -hmm. this industry. And I'm like, really? I'm like, because, because, you know, the 17 years, but I'm like, I don't know about OG, but I think some of us like veterans in the industry, Mm -hmm. it's like, we understand what the fashion show, even photo shoot at all of that is about. It's about the, the, the garments, the bag, the, the watch, whatever it is that you're showcasing. It's actually not about the model. And so we always have to tell models on the runway, like, all right, chill, like that little twirl and all that you're, that you're doing that's too much. We want to look Mm -hmm. at the clothes and, you know, we're focusing on the clothes. So I think it's good that you have that understanding. And I mean, obviously you want to throw in your, you know, you into it, but I think sometimes the newer models kind of miss the mark on what the end, the end goal is, you know, in a fashion show and things like that. So I think it's just, it's good to have that perspective. Um, Yes. So yeah, so that, I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. So you said you've been doing this for six years, you said? Years. Well, uh, I, I was 37 when I started, so I'm 46. So give or take now, it's like eight or nine, eight or nine years now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. Very cool. So you've done New York Fashion Week a couple of times. So what would be the next of the big four that you would want to walk in? <sighs> well, to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to cross over. I'm getting ready to cross over into being the designer. And I was going my, to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, that's the next thing. So I, I don't know if I want to continue to do the walking because now I'm so focused on being on the other side now, being the designer. 
the walking is great. I love modeling. I think modeling has given me a great platform to do what I'm getting ready to do next. Um, if I had a choice on where I wanted to walk again, um, I'm, I don't really have a specific place. I'm like, I'm not, everybody knows, oh, I want to walk in Paris and I want to walk in Spain or I want to walk in Italy and all these. I mean, and mind you, these are fantastic places to walk for. But you're talking about Tom Ford, Yves Saint Laurent, you know, the major players in the game that are taking you to these next levels. Do I have an opportunity to sit here and say, I'm going to walk with these designers? I would love to, but I have to be realistic. You know, this is not, this, my, my lane is not for that, is not down that lane no more. I got other people that are way better than me in this game that have been doing it far more better than me. Um, so I'm really just open to doing any kind of, anywhere that, I, that, that people would ask me to walk, as long as I feel that it's a, it's a tasteful show it's a nice show to be a part of. I get something out of it as much as they get something out of it. I love to network with a lot of people because I think that's kind of what gets the next page going in the next in the next chapter. But I really don't have a particular say like, all right, I want to walk for this place. You know, like I, I, I reached the goal with my personal goal was to walk in New York. If I had a chance to walk in an IMG show, then that probably would be a nice show to walk for sure. But um. There's not really a particular preference per se. Okay. Um, so are we allowed to know about your your design, like where you're heading there? Is it a secret? Okay, no. I I'll give you a couple of a couple of uh, nuggets. Um okay. I've been I've been really like it's been a long time. It's been about three years into making this, this project. Um it's gonna be about 12 pieces that I'm gonna come out with to start. Um, definitely going to start with that, and um, I have a a, beret, a variety of looks from men and women. Um, it's going to be the first time I've actually done something like this. I've been, a lot of the inspiration came from kind of like my mom's wardrobe and closet and colors, um, and um, I think it's going to be something that's really going to is going to be it's going to strike a chord for a lot of fashion because everybody likes to see the style that I wear because I wear a lot of colors and a lot of wear a lot of different ways of wearing colors. So I think that's what you're going to be seeing. It's just a really bold print of a lot of things. And um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, I'm hoping to have to, to launch the collection by the second to third week of October. Oh, so it's soon. Very soon. Oh, okay. I'm excited. I always get really excited about, I mean, I'm, I, I'm excited about fashion in general, but I'm always super excited about new launches. We have a, a designer out in LA who's part of the Worthy community and she's launching her first line um, at the end of August, I think actually end of August, beginning of September. And I, she let me see like a prototype and stuff. And it's just really exciting. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the birth of something new and getting something out there that's that's you you know that that represents you um so that's congratulations that's really exciting thank you thank you thank <laughs> you it's been it's been very ner it's nerve-wracking like i don't know what um and i don't even have my full collection in yet um I'm, but it's on it's supposed to be here and um i'm just i'm very nervous to see how this is going to turn out but um i think I feel like once I get once it gets here and I put my hands on everything and I'll be like, all right, it's this is now it's real, it's ready to go. We can we can we can get it moving. So yeah, it's really exciting right now. Yeah, I can understand the nerves because it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. it represents who you are and it represents you. So it's like if they like it, cool. If they don't, man, <laughs> like, but at the end of the day, I mean it's something to be so super proud of, you know. Um yeah. I would, I've been talking to the designer out in LA because I have this, this dream of doing just like a capsule collection. Cause I'm like, I'm not a designer. I keep, I kept telling myself that like, I'm not a designer. I'm not a designer. I just want to do just a few pieces. That's it. So, I mean, like, how did you decide that you're a designer? Um, I, I think I was, I've always loved fashion. Like I said, since I was very small. My mother has always been like the super fashionista because if you can, I will paint you a picture of my mom. 
but her pictures are just they're just so elegant of all the clothes that she used to wear 70s was the greatest era to me as far as fashion so i was just inspired by just watching and learning and seeing how the the the, the evolution of fashion had evolved through over the years from the 60s 70s 80s 90s and now and I love suits and I, I mean, I fell in love with the suit game and that's just something that I really was passionate about. And I was like, you know, why am I gonna sit here and keep wearing somebody else's stuff when I could just have my own? And um, everybody was like, dude, you have all these colors and you wear all this stuff so good. How do you do it? How do you wear this with that? So I kept getting asked the questions over and over again. How do you put this color with that color? How do you do this and with that? And how do you put this together with that together? And, and you do it so well. So I was like, well, I think at this point it was like, maybe that's the light bulb that I needed to kind of get the, the aha moment, design, come up with something, show a, show a different side and really speak your personality through the fashion. And um, I think at that point I was like, all right, I'm ready to stop doing this and start doing this. And, and, I'll, and you know, I, I will never say I won't walk because I love walking and I love modeling. And I think like I said, it's been, an enormous tool for me to um, get going. But now the designer is really going to be the, 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 the continual of the legacy for my kids and for my name. And it'll be it's nice to actually see my name in, you know, in, in a product that, me, that is meaningful. You know what I mean? That people are going to say, man, his product is, is, is good and it's, it's worth being a household name at some point. And that's really what's important to me right now is just kind of leaving my mark in the industry and leaving something for my kids to be able to continue because the fashion will continue to grow well after we're gone you know and it'll always evolve with certain things and certain looks but as long as i can kind of you know like the fuse then we'll see what happens well, it's definitely inspirational to me. I'm like, all right, well, now I'm going to do it because <laughs> Eric's doing it so I can do it. Um, so yeah. at least now, since we're local, I know who to call up when I'm ready to do mine. Um, Why not? I'll be more than glad to help. Sure. <laughs> well, because I've been talking to her out in LA and another designer locally, but now I'm like, oh, okay. So like, you know, I know I'd have people to call locally now. So yeah, absolutely. Me. But yeah, I'm it's, definitely... It's definitely not something to be afraid of but it's definitely a, a challenge that, and uh, and you know if it was if somebody said it was it was if it was that easy it wouldn't be so difficult mm. yeah that makes sense <laughs> that makes sense yeah every time i talk to a designer i get a little bit more inspired and i think for me i was like i need to stop saying i'm not a designer because that's my thing i think that's like my crutch well, I'm not a designer, so I don't have to worry right. about it. So no, you're a designer. You you claim claim it and put it out there into the world. I am this designer. This is who I am, and and the rest will come because when you start speaking things into existence, it will manifest into other things. So I strongly believe that. I feel believe that. I that, that the the amount of times I've been sitting here saying, "Oh my God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this," and then now it's going to actually unfold is like oh oh like I'm like standing against the wall like I don't know what's going to happen but I'm going to wait and see I just I'm just going to take a, I'm going to grab the bull by the horns and say you know either as part, of, part of my friends either you shit or you get off the toilet <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny because someone else I interviewed used the same the same the same line she's a stylist up in New York and she said the same thing so I'm like I mean yeah you know at the end of the day we're creatives, we're entrepreneurs, we are the ones who, who just go, you know, all mm -hmm. fears and everything, you know, like I, I've, I've said so many times, I'm literally like sweating, nervous, and I still like walk in the room where I still, you know, get up and do the speech, whatever it is, because I'm like, at the end of the day, that's what we do. We get up and we do it anyway. So yeah, definitely. Um, yep. So Obviously, your mom is a huge inspiration for you, but um, do you have any other inspirations as well? Um, I love watching just other, like you, you, have, you said, you have designers. So I love seeing the newer designers that are out. I love seeing older designers. I like looking at a lot of film on Tom Ford. I like looking at his stuff. 
Um, I definitely like watching his collection. My friend Adrian, um, he has a really, really good collection. And um, just the mere fact that people put their whole heart and souls into the fashion that they do and the, and the, and what they what they represent that is really inspiring to me. I love seeing that because when I hear the stories from people that they tell me, oh, you know, I, I started doing this and I was working as a busboy here and da da da, and then all of a sudden they they get catapulted into this whole new life of fashion because they made and they designed a garment that is worthy to say that this is fashion worthy and now we're it's walking down the runway i mean it's amazing because it, it brings me to tears when i think about that the fact that this could be my stuff walking down the runway in either new york or virginia or dc or philadelphia or paris or london or whatever but it's just i just feel like the anybody that has the same motivation the same the same hunger to see, to excel, to see their stuff is just, it motivates me. And that's what I, I feel like I, I get that inspiration from. I don't, it, designers that are top level designers, Ralph Lauren and all these other guys, you know, they've been around for ages because they have been consistent at what they do and they know how to do it right. And they are constantly evolving and they have a passion. There's a passion for this thing. So if you have that, I think that's kind of motivates anybody to kind of get the ball, get the wheels turning and, and you really want to see your stuff succeed and you want to see your stuff get down the wrong way. And you start small, but eventually you evolve and you go into a, a bigger name brand. And that's that's really what the overall pick the end the result is, is to see your stuff be and all you know, all over the world, all over the country. And you know, if you can do that, then you've won the game. Yeah, well, I love that you, um, I love that you said that, like, I love your answer, because it's one of the reasons why I love to do these interviews and stuff, because I feel like there's so much power in hearing other people's stories, and I agree with you, like, um, you know, I definitely respect and I love all the big names out there, but there is something so, yeah, just so powerful and raw about hearing someone coming up or someone, you know, just like kind of an everyday person who who made it and you know and everything like that like um someone who's not necessarily like celebrity status and things like that i i always like someone who's still accessible <laughs> mm -hmm. um right you know? so i think there's there's just such power in it you never know you know how your story will inspire someone or how your story will motivate someone or just give someone that little like push that they need or whatever it is so i love that um that was that was your answer um but yeah and speaking of that you know i want to thank you for coming and sharing your story um thank and you very letting much. us yeah just letting us hear a little bit more about you and your journey and where you're heading i always like that i always like to know you know where people are heading where you know what just you know what's going on in people's heads and where the creatives are what, what their plans are and things like that so i'm super excited about your upcoming line i thank you I am going to assume that Worthy is going to get an invite to absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> to the launch. Yeah, I will be having a small uh, pre-launch for uh, probably about forty people, okay. and then the actual launch I'll have there'll be a date for that as well. But I'm going to have a small pre-launch for like 30, 40 people. You know, my VIPs are going to come in, get a first look at it first, and then I'll actually do an, a really big unveiling at a place to be determined awesome awesome well good luck to you as you finish it out and get it ready to launch and thank you again so much for um you know for chatting with me today thank you for having me appreciate it no problem